Um, so um, I'm, I'm going to, to speak about uh, uh, Apache HTTPD uh, and about uh, uh, TLS certificate and uh, especially about the validation part of it. Um, yes, um, so so uh, yeah, the kind, I have a kind of an agenda. Um, I will speak about the uh, uh, TLS, about certificate and key uh, for client first in a bit in detail for server. Uh, speak about some basic. Uh, an interesting part of the talk is about the uh, responder, which is something uh, uh, that looked to be a bit tricky, but in fact is quite easy. And the certificate revo uh, revocation. Um, I have a part on the uh, uh, server certificate, basically uh, that they are signed uh, by uh, CAE, uh, uh, show a little how to do those things. Uh, I'm going to speak about Let's Encrypt, of course, speak about uh, ModMD and ModMD2, and I have a bunch of demo. I don't have many slides, don't, so don't hesitate to ask questions. I, can see the uh, the chat uh, if I'm looking to it. Uh, so uh, um, I don't have a moderator. So uh, uh, just ask the question on the chat, and I will uh, try to answer them on on the fly. So uh, uh, I'm working for Red Hat. Uh, been writing uh, software for a long, long time. Uh, I'm a, a Tomcat committer since a long time. I'm also at uh, Apache HTTPD committer. Uh, I'm a runner. I'm normally the one organizing the morning run at the Apache Con. Uh, uh, definitively at home, uh, that's a bit tricky. And I'm living uh, in Switzerland uh, in Neuchâtel, uh, near the mountains. So uh, let's jump on the topic. Um, when we speak about uh, uh, TSL or SSL, uh, let's use uh, TSL, it's uh, the actual name. Uh, you always have a, a, a key and a certificate. That's the basis of the uh, 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 mathematical theory that are behind it. So it's a pair, uh, basically they are generated together. Uh, for example, you, you can use OpenSSL to do that. OpenSSL is going uh, to generate a certificate and the corresponding key. Uh, the key, you need to keep secret. It's not something you should publish, except if you prepare example uh, for someone. Uh, and the certificate is something you somehow publish. Uh, publish is mean because basically you're going to put it uh, on, on a server uh, and it's going to be sent uh, to anyone connecting uh, to the server or it's going to be uh, sent to uh, your bank or uh, any organization uh, that wants your certificate. And basically, uh, the, uh, you're going to encrypt your stuff uh, with your key and they're going to decrypt it with the certificate. Uh, you have to identify yourself in the certificate because basically I can generate a certificate, uh, but I need that someone uh, signed it uh, or at least can tell that it's really me. Uh, this is done via a certificate authority or uh, uh, via one of the certificate authority is Let's Encrypt and they're going to allow online um, validation uh, to uh, basically sign your certificate. Uh, remember, uh, the only thing you send is the certificate. The key, uh, you have to keep it uh, secret. Uh, normally, it's protected by a passphrase. Uh, by default, if you use OpenSSL uh, to create, uh, the pair is going to encrypt uh, 
the second key by default. So let's jump a little in the detail. Uh, so uh, I'm, I'm assuming here that uh, I have uh, created my own CR uh, using uh, OpenSSL. OpenSSL has a wonderful tool uh, named uh, set CR for Certificate Authority. Uh, in it's a, it's a Perl script that uh, basically is going to help you on all these steps. Uh, you can use OpenSSL directly, but it's just a bit uh, more difficult. Uh, yes, as Nick uh, mentioned, uh, the CI is uh, uh, kind of a single point of failure, and uh, it definitely something, uh, certificate authority is something you don't want to see someone hack, hacking it, because basically that would be a disaster. They, they have... Uh, uh, the key, uh, they have the certificate and they could uh, basically uh, sign anything uh, to send to you and you can pretend to be Google if you would be able to uh, sign uh, uh, the certificate uh, via the CA. So uh, here I'm using the small tool. The first command, uh, a new rec, is going to create a new request. Basically, it, it, uh, it creates a re, um, certificate re, re request uh, that have to that can be sent to a CR to be signed, and a key. Basically, the year is the name of the file. Uh, those files can be uh, easily imported uh, in a lot of browsers, like in Firefox, for example. Uh, you are definitely not going to import a request. Does not make any sense. Uh, you're going to have to either send the request to your CA. Uh, basically, they, they're going to tell you how to do this. Usually, you put that, that in the mail, or and they sign it and then send you back the, the uh, certificate signed. In my case, I am running my own certificate. So basically, I'm going to use the uh, again this, uh, the small uh, uh, Perl script CA. Uh, to sign the request. Basically, I'm going to tell it sign request. Uh, it's going to uh, they uh, ask me for, um, uh, usually you have to run that as root because you're going to be a bit careful uh, if you're playing with a certificate authority, even if it's a demo one. Uh, then it, it will, of course, uh, ask for um, uh, the uh, root uh, password and uh, the password of the private key of the SEA key. And this one, this uh, command will at the end create uh, a new set.pem file, uh, which is the signed set. This is what you're going to receive uh, from your certificate authority if you have a certificate authority that does that for you. So, um, if you look in the browser, this, this is a, 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 a this a description of uh, that's my own certificate that I have been uh, looking to it. Uh, I've imported uh, my uh, my CR certificate uh, in the browser in order to be able to make my demo. Uh, uh, I'm not a uh, CR certificate authority, so um, I need to import the uh, uh, CR uh, set PEM file uh, in the browser. Uh, of course, uh, this is a self-signed uh, uh, certificate. Uh, when you create a certificate, you can uh, you can sign it uh, yourself. Uh, it's a self-signed certificate. It's a simple open SSL command uh, to do that. Uh, let's have a look a little to uh, uh, what is the server exchange uh, in this case. I'm going to look to the to actual protocol. Uh, the uh, TSL uh, uh, 1.2 and 1.3. I don't care about the uh, older ones. That does not make any sense. And I'm only using uh, uh, TCP IP, uh, TCP, so I'm not going to uh, speak about the orange uh, trips, which belong to the UDP protocol. So this is just a, a capture uh, of uh, the um, connection. Uh, I was doing uh, some time ago. Uh, this is a, a client hello uh, to go into a Firefox. Um, when you use Wireshark, you can debug these things. So you can see that uh, 
there's a part of the information uh, which is uh, uh, um, not uh, com not un encrypted. You can see what it is. Uh, you can read the pieces of the uh, things. It follows the specification. Um, but at some point, the uh, the data uh, start to be encrypted. As soon as you have application data, like here, uh, this, yeah, the, the mouse is not really uh, big visible, but uh, uh, you have the application data. The application data is encrypted. Uh, you can't debug that uh, easily. I mean, if uh, you have to debug an application which is using TSL, uh, you, you probably have uh, to configure your server uh, to use uh, HTTP uh, temporarily to make a test because you're not supposed to crack the uh, uh, TSL connection and it is uh, usually quite complex. Uh, so, uh, the uh, the client is uh, sending a client hello and the server in this case it's a tomcat uh, it doesn't matter much it could have been an lgpd it's exactly the same uh, is going to answer by a server hello uh, this server hello is going to contain the information uh, is needed and you can see uh, there's a bunch of exchange there there's a server hello uh, uh, there's some uh, change cipher and then the application data that is encrypted. Uh, so uh, let's compare two different uh, pro the two different protocol. Uh, of course, the uh, 1.3 is the most uh, uh, up to date one. Uh, the uh, 1.2 is, is kind of like getting old now. Uh, if you see the two dialog, uh, you see immediately that uh, one uh, is a kind of like uh, a bit faster than the other one. It had a bit less steps. And the important part, uh, if you look inside, uh, if you look inside the uh, server hello, uh, you're able uh, to debug it uh, and you're able to read uh, the information uh, about the, uh, uh, the certificate the uh, client, the server is sending to you. Uh, this is maybe something you don't want to uh, someone to uh, capture. So, uh, if you use the if you use the uh, uh, if you use the one dot three, this is going to be encrypted, and uh, you can't uh, you can't see that uh, you can't see that data. At least you can't see that data easily. So uh, it's definitively better uh, to use uh, uh, TSL uh, 1.3 when uh, you are able to do that, uh, which means if you are using an up-to-date open SSL and up-to-date uh, HTTPD, it's definitively using it. So uh, now I have a bunch of uh, sh sh short configuration file and basically uh, we start with something which is a quite of a kind of easy, and we are going to increase the complexity little by little. Uh, so uh, this is the first uh, connection. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll prepare the Chrome to uh, show it. So um, this is a very basic configuration, uh, as, as you can see. Uh, it's uh, my HTTPD. Uh, I have put a listen. Uh, I've created a virtual host. Uh, well, because in, it's, it's always more easy. I kind of use SSL for everything, but that's uh, not easy in the case of the demo. So I always start a bunch of uh, listen on different ports, and then I can have different uh, uh, on this on each of these ports. I'm going to start a virtual server, and this virtual server. Uh, is going to be uh, doing uh, um, different things uh, depending on the port. Uh, so this is the first one. Uh, I just want to basically encrypt my data. And uh, on the server, I need nothing else um, than uh, 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 having a certificate file and, a, and the key uh, corresponding uh, to this certificate. Of course, uh, I, I need to have to send. I, I have first send the uh, the CE what uh, 
the certificate authority uh, certificate that signed uh, the uh, new set of the PM, the, the new set from uh, my server, uh, to the browser. Also, why you would have a message uh, saying that uh, the browser can't recognize uh, the certificate. So, if we go there, uh, we we click on the basic TSL stuff. Uh, uh, I have a small application. Uh, it's, it's a CGA script, which is uh, basically showing what was sent and what we are interested in. It is what it was saying. It was what the client, what the uh, what was used in the TSL stuff. We have the uh, cipher. Uh, we have the algorithm. Uh, we have the identification of the server uh, and all kind of things, uh, as you can see here. Hello, um, also my email. I have created the things in the uh, in the correct way so that you can use it. So let's make the stuff a little more complex. Uh, let's say, okay, uh, it's good. Uh, but I would like that uh, basically uh, my client, which is the browser, uh, is going to send a, a client certificate. So basically, uh, I have the same configuration as before. I'm going to, uh, to uh, add a, a CR certificate file, uh, which is basically uh, telling uh, um, uh, the server that uh, you have to accept a certificate that are signed uh, using this server. Uh, and uh, I have uh, add the uh, SSL uh, uh, very verify client require that it make the uh, that is required for a client uh, certificate. And I have set the, the, the depth of the verification to one uh, uh, basically, uh, because uh, I have only one step there. So if I go back to the uh, stuff I was showing before, uh, we have uh, now, um, uh, I'm just starting uh, the, the browser on the other port, and uh, I have a bunch of certificates that uh, correspond to the server. Uh, usually when you connect to one server, you will have one certificate, but you might have more than one. Uh, yeah, I have created a bunch of them, uh, and um, I have um, one for making some tests. I have a need valid one because I decided that uh, it is invalid. I will show later uh, why it is invalid, and I have a valid one. So for example, if I'm using this one, I click OK, uh, then it's going to display what I have. And if I look in the information, as you can see, uh, you now have uh, the um, information about the certificate. Uh, the information about the certificate uh, could be interesting because you can really use it, uh, for example, to identify your user. Uh, it's it's a kind of a not very practical way of um, identifying user, but it's a very safe one because uh, the user does not even uh, need to know his uh, really internal password. Uh, he will just have uh, um, you send him. He is going to uh, to um, he's going to create the certificate. He's going to uh, basically protect it, and then uh, you're going to have uh, his information. And this can be sent encrypted uh, to the server, so uh, no one can uh, pick uh, and analyze the connection and try to hack it. So let's let's move on. Uh, so now uh, I'm going to uh, verify uh, the client certificate because, as you have seen, uh, uh, I can send uh, any certificate, but the server can do a different uh, validation. Uh, basically, when you how you decide that the certificate is invalid, uh, basically so the one that I've given you the certificate, or the one that I signed your certificate, is going to decide that it is invalid. If you decide your certificate is invalid, uh, well, you just have to remove uh, your private key and you're done. Uh, well, you might have lost it and uh, you can uh, ask the one that signed it uh, to make it, uh, uh, to invalidate it. Uh, so basically it can't be used by someone else. So um, uh, I, I have, in the two certificates I've shown uh, before, I have, uh, one which is uh, invalid, one which is valid. 
and I was revoking them to revoke a certificate. The, this is what the uh, certificate authority is going to do. It's going to use a tool. Um, here I have uh, used OpenSSL. Uh, basically, you use uh, CA of the OpenSSL, uh, CA uh, revoke. Uh, it, uh, it's going to revoke the certificate. Uh, then uh, you can generate uh, 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 certif certificate revocation list, which is a file. It's created a, a PAM file, um, a PAM file, which is going to uh, contain um, all the certificates that have been revoked. Uh, this this uh, certificate revocation list can be used as a file, as it is. Uh, HTTPD uh, is able to read this file, uh, or it can be used with a responder. So let's see uh, how we do that. So uh, this is the first example. Uh, as you can see, it's uh, it's just it's another uh, uh, virtual host. Uh, uh, it uh, it contains it's just adding some information more, uh, like uh, we want to revoke at the uh, uh, leaf level. And uh, we have um, a certificate, uh, uh, revo uh, certificate revocation file that contains all what have been revoked. Uh, and we put the name of the file. So it's just adding a little more and it's making the things a little uh, more interesting now. So now if I return back to my example, uh, I'm going. Uh, to go here, and if I pick the invalid certificate, uh, I should not be able to connect. As you can see, there's an error. Uh, and if I pick a valid one, I'm able to connect. As you can see, I'm getting the connection. So let's try something else. Uh, basically, uh, a file uh, is a bit tricky to use because basically with the file, uh, you have to uh, uh, restart HTTPD when you change the uh, uh, this file. Uh, if you are a small service, uh, you don't, you're not revoking a certificate uh, that often. So might be doable, uh, but if you are a big bank uh, that use this uh, uh, to protect their typically uh, their automats uh, to retrieve money, uh, in some case for, by some bank, they are protected by this kind of things. Uh, if you do something like that, then you want to make something a little more sophisticated. Uh, so here, this is an example um, where we are going to use a responder. Uh, OCSP responder is basically uh, as, uh, could be you could do that using OpenSSL, but you have tools that do it. Uh, you you have to uh, in this case here I'm configuring one. Uh, you can it can be interesting to configure one even if you have several um, uh, CA in uh, in your system because basically you can use uh, this default responder. Uh, as a kind of as a proxy, it can uh, fetch the request and do uh, uh, proxying uh, there for you. So uh, you don't need to check uh, every time the uh, the certificate. Uh, uh, definitively, in my case, I've, I've prepared the certificate for more tests. Uh, so basically. Uh, uh, my certificate have uh, each of my certificate have uh, responder information, and I want uh, to use the default responder that I have started on my laptop. Uh, basically, uh, it's running on a report, so I have to tell to over. Uh, I have to tell HTTPD to overwrite uh, the information that is contained uh, in the client certificate. So let's here. I'm going to show uh, what it is. So basically, I have started. Uh, the responder, uh, it had a configuration file. And it's going to contain, uh, it's 
uh, also its own certificate. Uh, you can see that the first time I was doing this demo was last year. Uh, I've, of course, the, all, all the files have been renewed in the meantime. Uh, by default, the certificate, when you create them by hand, they are valid for one year. So uh, it's a good practice to do this uh, stuff from time to time so you remember how to do it. So the in, uh, interesting part is uh, basically uh, you have some certificate information there and you have to give him the list uh, of uh, the revocation uh, list which we have here. So basically uh, the uh, responder is able to handle several certificates. Here I have just on, on, on one, so I have say third certificate say, and the first day uh, contained the information here. Uh, it is signed this, and this it had this information. So basically, um, it's uh, it it is uh, uh, it can be used. So let's let's see uh, what it does. I'm going to pick again the browser. So uh, this is using a, uh, and I can if I use the invalid one, uh, it's going to say it's not working. And uh, if I go back and uh, use the valid one, uh, it is going to work. If I stop the responder, uh, it is uh, going to give an error. I can kill the responder. Uh, no, I can't kill the responder, I'm not sure. <laughs> Okay, uh, so now I've killed the responder, and I guess if I redo the comment, I will now have an error. Uh, in fact, it says it's not secure, and did I pick the right one? Uh, I must have missed the process or something like that. No, I have not missed the process. Okay. Uh, let's restart the browser. Uh, nah. I'll go on, otherwise I will run out of time. I'll look to it later on. Okay, uh, you can uh, use the... Um, okay. Uh, you can use the... Uh, um, information of the responder that you have in the certificate. Uh, this is a more easy configuration. This is what normally uh, you will be using uh, because basically you're going uh, to receive a certificate that might have been uh, signed by uh, someone else than you. And uh, those are, those guys are usually able uh, to, uh, they uh, usually running a responder and they're going to be able to validate that the certificate is valid. So yeah, it's very easy. You just say as, uh, uh, SSL OSCP enable on, and then it's going to make the validation. And if I go there, and pick the invalid certificate, it's not going to work. And if uh, uh, what did I click? And if I tick the valid one, oh, it's not going to work. Oh, of course, I've I've killed the uh, I I'll kill the uh, I'll kill this guy before. So uh, here it is. So OSCP validation, uh, I need to restart the uh, server, otherwise I'm going to be in trouble. I can, I, I can just copy past the command line. So it's has been restarted uh, now. Uh, this will, when I reload this, this will work. I give him the valid one and it is working, okay. <laughs> So,
So we can run a bunch of command on the uh, on the. Uh, uh, I'm going to check. Get a little feedback. Um, so you can check uh, that the uh, OSCP validation is working. Like you can you can check uh, that uh, uh, your OSCP uh, server is working correctly. Uh, you have OpenSSL to do this kind of thing. That's quite kind, kind of easy. Uh, you give the uh, all the uh, certificates you need. Uh, you you want you give the certificate you want uh, you want to test. Uh, it's going to tell uh, whether it get a response. It's going to take you to tell you the status of the certificate. Uh, uh, in, so I have run it against my invalid certificate. Uh, it tells that the certificate is has been revoked. Uh, this is why it's invalid. Uh, the the next example uh, I do that for the valid one uh, and is uh, saying that the certificate is good. Uh, as you can see, it also uh, uh, tells you uh, when you can do the next update. Uh, this this I was uh, reading the slide uh, a while ago, as you can see. Uh, it's not today. I can copy past the command and uh, do it today. Uh, I need to copy past it. Um, just give me a minute. So I have it here. See. So this is on the um, invalid one, and if I do it on the valid one. It says it's good, and it's the date of today. As you see, the next update, uh, it's a GMT. I'm on the um, on plus two, so um, that's good. Um, so now, where are my slides? Let's restart it. I have it back. Here it is. So, <laughs> okay, let's move. So, um, servers, well, uh, we have been validating a client certificate, but you can, you can also be interesting uh, to validate uh, your own uh, certificate, the certificate that are running on your server. Uh, basically, uh, those have also uh, that those also can be revoked. Uh, they are also signed by CE. You can also use OSCP on, on it, and you can use uh, Stapling. Stapling is basically a very interesting feature. Uh, it's going uh, to allow you to test the certificate, to cache the information, and send again the information to your client that uh, are checking that your certificate is still valid. How you do that? This is quite easy. Uh, you just have to add some information. And here, you need to prepare the certificate a little more uh, because basically, uh, you can see, so you first, let's start correctly. So this is a, a virtual host. You have to use the SSL uh, stapling cache. Uh, it's like the session cache uh, in, um, uh, in, in, the, in the normal, uh, that you're normally using when you're using mode SSL. Uh, this uh, instruction, as well as the timeout and a bunch of, uh, uh, of those instruction uh, don't belong to, uh, um, uh, virtual host, they belong to the main server, so you have to put it uh, outside the virtual host. If you would put these two instructions uh, inside, uh, HTTP would not start and give an error. 
So what we have here, we have to, uh, uh, we are specifying a, a CR certificate file again, but here it's a shame because basically now um, to be able to do this test, uh, what I'm going, what I have done is like basically I have uh, now two certificates. I have an intermediate certificate which is going to uh, check itself against the responder, and I have uh, another one which is a kind of like my um, root CR that I have imported uh, in the browser. So uh, the CHN, uh, which is, in, in, in fact, it's a, the directive uh, uh, used is the CR certificate file. In fact, uh, you can put, uh, you can change your certificate. That's uh, a little more easy. Uh, here I have to tell, uh, uh, verify two, because basically, definitively, I have uh, an intermediate certificate now and the certificate uh, uh, I'm using. And I, I tell it that uh, I want that it use the uh, stapling on. So let's uh, try this. So here I have some small. Uh, this. It it is working. Um, the this is a bit funny. Uh, I can have a look to my certificate. Uh, as you can see, uh, it is it looks perfectly valid. I have uh, a man, uh, one certificate uh, which is going to be validated uh, through the responder, and. Uh, uh, no, I have one certificate which is going to be uh, valid, uh, validated by the responder, and I have my main uh, certificate which is signing the, uh, the uh, this one. Um, I don't know what uh, why uh, uh, Chrome is complaining. I guess because basically uh, I have used the same name and it does not like it. Post our name uh, local host, so that was not a good idea. And I was regenerating this just before the demo, so uh, I kind of like can't retry it. But I'll I'll arrange that one day, and uh, it works. So let's. How do I? I know that it had been using uh, the. Um, if I go here, I can tell my. Uh, error log, and I can see here that uh, it had been making um, the, uh, uh, I need to use VI, sorry. So um, I don't, tons of tries, but uh, I should you see it here? It has been using the stapling. Uh, in fact, here you see this is the trace. Uh, it says that uh, he has been using a uh, cached response uh, because, well, I was doing uh, the test before. So, uh, here to understand the things is like basically. Uh, uh, HTTPD have gone against the responder to check that the intermediate uh, certificate uh, uh, is valid. Any question? Uh, no, you, you you have to make sure that your names are uh, coherent, otherwise it, it, it's 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 not going to work. Yes. <laughs> I mean, there's a bunch of tricky stuff there, uh, and uh, it's very easy to make mistakes. Uh, uh, security is something you need to be uh, very, very careful. Uh, it's uh, it's it's so easy to make a mistake. So uh, it's better to see uh, something not working uh, than something working, uh, because if you see something working, you might do it wrong. So uh, don't it. Double check ever what you're doing. Uh, if you want to use a responder, or if uh, you are in a company that uh, is providing a responder to your customer, make very, very sure that uh, uh, this is done the correct way. 
And I'm going to run out of time, but uh, I have a few words about Let's Encrypt. Let's Encrypt is a, a, a nice tool that allows you uh, to um, uh, basically is going to uh, you're going to create your certificate and uh, you're going to create your key and your certificate request and is going to uh, sign your request uh, and then you can use uh, your certificate. Uh, Let's encrypt certificate are recognized by most of the uh, of the browser uh, and um, you can use it um, uh, you can use it uh, through modmd uh, which uh, allows you to have this uh, entirely automatic uh, because what you do you need uh, Let's encrypt certificate uh, valid uh, for uh, 90 uh, days as far as I remember. Uh, and you need either to renew them uh, using the set boot renew or uh, mod MD is going to do it for you. Uh, mod MD uh, also, uh, when you use uh, Let's Encrypt, allows you to uh, uh, use OCSP uh, sampling, which uh, basically uh, does not uh, make a request every time and then uh, make sure that uh, you don't need to ask every time uh, Let's Encrypt that the certificate is valid. How you configure that? That's very easy. Uh, you have just uh, to put uh, uh, some information. This is for the set boot. Uh, basically, uh, the set boot tool is going to change the uh, uh, certificate uh, for you. It's going to change the chain uh, you're using every time the certificate is being renewed. Uh, another way of using mod MP. Uh, here, uh, some reminder, certificate valid for uh, uh, It had to make a validation. Validation could be using HTTP. Basically, uh, uh, Let's Encrypt is going to ask you to provide a page. Uh, the other one are a bit more complex. DNS is, uh, you have to show that you own the DNS. And um, uh, the renewal tool is most and and you can use the sampling. Uh, here, this is an example. Uh, of uh, my running server. Uh, basically, uh, this is the mod MD configuration. I'm the server admin. Uh, I have accepted the agreement. Uh, my domain is this domain. What you have to remember uh, when you use mod MD, uh, if you use uh, SL Linux, uh, you have to enable uh, the HTTPD to be able to connect outside. Uh, otherwise, it's not going to work. And if you use a stamp, stample, uh, you can just put MDMS stample on, and it is going to do it for you. So this is basically, and this is a try to connect to my server. Uh, you can try the command on your own. The server is available online. Uh, you see in its response that uh, it had, it will respond, uh, that it had a, a uh, the responder is uh, let's encrypt and uh, it will tell you when it had been produced as I've been connected to the server it must have been produced some time ago. Uh, Acme v2 this is a new version of the protocol uh, to basically establish the connection the information uh, between the, uh, the validation uh, of your server uh, via um, uh, let's encrypt. Uh, this is uh, uh, in the uh, modmd 2.2x version and it's going to be uh, soon available. Uh, the version one is going to be uh, sunset at some point. If you have any question, don't hesitate to mail me. Uh, if you have more generic question about HTTPD, uh, mail the dev list or the user list. Um, the code of HTTPD is available. You can have, uh, you can look to it. Uh, I have put all the uh, all the demo uh, in my GitHub uh, under the ApacheCon uh, uh, 2020. I have to change this slide. And uh, I can briefly take some question before this uh, is cut. If I have no question. Thank you very much for listening and sorry for being over time. Okay, thank you, bye-bye.